Hey there, this is Sunil Manji, Senior Principal Solution Architect at Elastic. I'm creating a short video demonstration on how to tune a sentence transformer model. In no way is this supposed to be set as this is the only way to do it. This is a way that I have found uh, through many trial and errors. There's many articles out there uh, on how to do this, but unfortunately I struggled quite a bit on getting any of them to work. Um, so I finally created a notebook that actually works. If you see this video and you have a working model and a notebook, please share it in the comments. I'd love to see your thoughts about it. Uh, but here I'm sharing my exercise of how I tuned a sentence transformer model. Let me explain a little bit about why I went down this practice or this, this exercise. I work in the field and I speak with a lot of customers that want to use vector or semantic search but a lot of times the embedding models, which is the sentence transformer models, are tuned on or trained on public domains. And oftentimes they'll probably work fine. But on private domain data sets, they often find files short. And there's many different tunings that you could do to kind of center the truth on these embedding models. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. Uh, the notebook is published. I'll share the link on my GitHub page. And what I tried to do is something a little tongue in cheek, but a little silly, but it actually shows how, to, how you can, with a very small data set, start to tune a transformer model, again, to recenter its truth. So here, what I did is I, I selected superheroes. I'm a big fan of Superman. And what if in a world Sunil was Superman? So that's what I wanted to do is I wanted to train a model. And basically, when you tune uh, a sentence transformer model, Think of it like a graph. You're trying to recenter it to train, uh, tune it to say what is what is its next reality. And here, the next reality is that I'm trying to tell it that hey, I, I Sunil is Superman. And you can input your name in, in in the notebook, and you can have some fun with it. But essentially, what I want to do is that I'm going to tune it to say who is the Superman's new identity. And then after we go through the tuning exercise, I want to determine whether the tuning with a very small data set didn't make any difference on its new center of truth. And we'll find that out, right? We'll compare it against the original model with the newly trained model, and we'll look at the outputs of it. Now we also, in the notebook, publish the new model on Hugging Face. Uh, so to run the notebook, you will need to go to uh, hug your Hugging Face account, simply click on your, uh, your profile, click on settings, go to access tokens, and you will need an access token that is write enabled. So you can create a new token here and it says whether the role needs to be a read or write. So that will be required in order to publish your newly tuned model on Hugging Face. So now going over to the Colab environment, uh, the, this should be, you should be able to run this. What I struggled with is using many of the blogs uh, they were slightly outdated. I'm sure they worked, right? This space is moving so darn fast, and I'm sure in a few months this will be outdated. I'll try my best to keep this updated as, as much as possible. Uh, but first thing is in Colab, what I need to do since the free environment was uh, was really slow, wasn't working for me, I connected this to my, uh, my custom GCE VM. And you, you can do that. You don't have to, but it just runs a little faster, in my opinion. And instructions on how to do that are, are simple and they're available right through that link uh, that I just showed you. You connect here, uh, uh, connect to a runtime type. I'm sorry, connect to a custom GCE VM, and it'll tell you the instructions on how to do it. Super simple. So again, what are we doing here? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some pre uh, setups. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and clone the transformer model if you just use the latest version, there's a bug here. I had to find out the hard way. Um, and again, this is being published on January 2nd of 2024. Happy New Year. Uh, so hopefully that, that we don't have to do this soon, but at, at the moment we do. We're going to go ahead and do some housekeeping uh, and, and start installing some of the, the libraries we need. And then Superman's identity. Here's where you would... <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm gonna scroll in a little bit. Here's where you would put in your name, right? We're having a little fun with this. And we want to recenter the truth on the embedding model. And then um, here, we're going to tune the model location. <clears throat> you wanna obviously override this with whatever your location is. Mine is Sunil Man, you would use your own. Pretty simple, we're importing some libraries here. 
Again, this part is a little, uh, it's going into the weeds a little bit on, on the code. I'm not gonna run through every piece because it's pretty simple, uh, but I'll walk you through like, what, what am I doing here? So I select your hugging face model here. This is, I, I selected the NIL uh, distilled Roberta uh, base V2 as a transformer model. And then I created some custom data, right? Uh, again, I, I, um, I, wanted to I wanted to train a model with a custom domain or a private domain. So how do I do that? I just generate one, right? So uh, that's what the script is here. It's just generating custom domain uh, data on superheroes and giving it some traits. You just run through that. It's pretty simple. Um, and then uh, what what is important is once we create that, <clears throat> The way that the, the training works is that it needs to have a structure. It needs to have a structure of what the sentences look like. And that's exactly what it's doing here. It's basically saying Superman is known for his extraordinary powers. And then you would be like Sunil, whoever is strong and dependable as Superman. And we label that, right? And, and, and you can read about the input examples. They're well documented. But basically, you're trying to tell. You're trying to give it examples of like what is a positive, what is neutral, and what is negative. And then you train the model on, what, on that. So you, you know you say Superman is strong, Sunil is weak. Well then that's that's negative, right? We're trying to so, so you give it a lower label score. Um, you're trying to tune the model, say like what to for, look what to look for for it to increase the score. Um, and then you set your loss function. Uh, a lot of good reading about this uh, here. I'm using the cosine similarity loss model uh, for for my loss function. Uh, again, good reading there. I'm not going to review it, but that's what I'm using in my notebook. <clears throat> and then um, to run this fast right uh the more uh, the number of epochs is like number of iterations think of it like that of how many times you're going to do it the larger the number the uh the more times that you'll train it it'll become uh, the, start to recenter its truth even further um and then how much of the data do you want to train i'm doing it 10 percent. you can do 100 percent. it really doesn't matter uh, it does matter excuse me but for this exercise i found that you know just doing like 10 percent is just fine and then we tune the model Right, uh, which it, it will take uh, based on how much resources you have. I'm not running on a GPU. Uh, you could run on a GPU and have it run faster, but it takes like for my VM machine with 16 or 8 8 B CPUs, it takes around one or two minutes. So pretty simple. Again, the point is um, with very small data set, very limited compute, are we able to tune an expert model to recenter its truth? Right, to understand your custom domain. And I wanted to overcome the fear of being able to train that. And I did that, right? We're all vulnerable when we don't understand something. And then we fail a bunch of times. And then here you go. I fail a bunch of times. And I finally got the model to work. And I'm making the, the information available to, to anyone that's interested in how I did it. Again, it's not the only way to do it, but it was one way of doing it. Um, so here I share my sentence transformer model. And the sentence transformer model, um, I used a notebook login. It's gonna ask you for, if you run this, it's gonna say, hey, what's your write token? That's the one that I talked about earlier. Have it there and you're good. It'll ask you for it, you'll see. Um, and then I wanna save the model, All right? I wanna save the model because why? I'm gonna save it there and then I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna test the base model with my newly trained model. And the first thing I do is I just wanna make sure that the model works, so I test the newly tuned embedding bottle and make sure that vectors are are in fact an output of it and it looks like that did the work and then um, I want to test the tune model against the base model right this is where uh, the reality hits right and here uh, I'm basically saying hey let, let's see when I say Superman and I say the same sentence about Sunil did, did the score increase right so in this scenario Superman is a hero for his strength Sunil is a, uh, a and Sunil is a Hero known for his strength, and I take these similar, uh, take these sentences, and I say, does the model find this similar, right, based on different characters? And it actually did. Um, and the score increased. Mo you know, it was modest. It wasn't large. Again, the data set's small. We ran it through one epoch iteration. But this actually shows how powerful this is and how simple this is, that you can take a public embedding model, give it your own private data set, and start to tune it, right? And with ease and not a lot of compute required all the time. Depends on how big your data set is. And you can recenter the model's truth based on your pro your private domain data sets. Thanks for watching. Hope that's helpful.